Hi, if you like the video, please remember to subscribe. Hi everybody and in today's video I want to review, finally do the review for uh, my SJ4000 Wi-Fi uh, action cam that I got from SJ Cam just before Christmas. If you're familiar with the channel you know that I've done uh, a few little kind of, um, I did a kind of a box opening with, with different features on, I've done things about the wife, the um, the audio quality and the video quality but this is kind of my overall summary review and unlike some of my videos where I kind of go on and on and on and then talk about it at the end. I thought for the people who just want to, you know, the quick summary, I'm going to do that first, then go into more details as we go on. So, the SJ4000 Wi-Fi from SJ Cam is an amazing uh, action camera for the price. Um, this, this little camera takes beautiful 1080p 30 frames a second video. And you've seen some at the beginning of, the, uh, of this video and you'll see some you know, right at the end as well. Um, outside, you know, in, in nice uh, nice light. Um, you can also use it to take really interesting time-lapse videos as well. Um, it's got a little screen on the um, on the back um, so that you can you can compose things and you can change the settings, which is really, which makes think makes it very easy to use it as well. Um, you can see it now. This is, it's in its little waterproof case, but the little the camera itself is a lot smaller as well. You can control this uh, with uh, over Wi-Fi with your phone. So you can imagine your, your phone screen becomes that screen instead. You can change all the settings and you can start it recording video or taking stills like that. And you can transfer files across. Um, and really importantly as well, in the box when you get it, it comes with loads of different mounts. So bicycle mount, handlebar mounts, um, things to stick it to your your uh, your helmet um, and if you've already got some accessories which you probably have if you're a photographer like a um, a monopod or a uh, a gorilla pod it comes with enough enough mounts where you can adapt these so that you can be using basically the camera uh, straight away to take great action footage now the white balance can be a little bit off sometimes it can be a little bit blue when you're in overcast skies when you use it on the uh, on the auto mode and even if you try and compensate by using say uh, I think there's a shade mode or an overcast uh, white balance mode as well it doesn't quite doesn't quite get it right so you know you do have to you would have to adjust it a little bit if you wanted to I still think I think the footage uh, still looks pretty pretty good um, but you, you know one of the things you tend to notice when you're watching like the GoPro footage the white balance tends to be very 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 good now I don't know if, if that's the people doing the post processing afterwards or the software but definitely if you want it to look fantastic you're going to have to fettle with the white balance in post but you know not, it's really not necessary to do that because lots of time you, you'll be pretty happy but if it's an overcast it looks a little bit blue now although it says it on the box and it says it on when people are selling, selling um, the uh, SJ4000 there's no true 60 frames per second slow-mo on this on the box and on the listings, they always say it does 720p at 16 frames a second. It doesn't. All it does is play the same frame twice. So ignore that. 
The stills this takes are fairly low resolution, the true kind of sensor. It's about 2 megapixels. You don't gain anything by shooting at 10 and 12 megapixels. Um, so it's not brilliant for uh, shooting stills if you want to have really high resolution photos. The battery can be a little bit underpowered too. Um, and I'd have liked to see a few more options on the time lapse. Even though it does time lapse, it's quite long. You can only, uh, the maximum it can do is sort of every uh, three seconds and I'd like to see it for one second. It does have a built in microphone, but I don't think it's particularly good. When the camera is in its little waterproof case, the microphone really can't hear very much at all unless it's very loud. So if you've got it on your helmet and you're on a motorbike or something or on the side of the car, yeah, it'll hear the wind noise and it'll hear the rattle, but it won't hear you talking if you're very close to it. And even when you take it out of the case and use the skeleton bracket that it comes with, even then you tend to find that the microphone doesn't pick that much. You really do have to boost it up in post-processing. Um, however, if you think you might want a GoPro, and you want a camera with a screen on the back and probably Wi-Fi as well uh, so you can control it over, over your phone because you want to c control the composition of your videos. Maybe like me, you, you're not buying this to, for action, you're using it as a third camera so it's going to be in a fixed position a lot of the time. And you don't want to pay the ridiculous prices that GoPros go for. I would seriously recommend the SJ4000 Wi-Fi. Um, just make sure you get a spare battery and lots of the packages when you buy them come with at least one spare battery and be prepared to tweak the white balance in post a little bit just to get it the way you want it. Um, and remember if you want to buy this camera as like a, 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 well, a main camera or even a b-roll camera where you're going to be recording pieces to camera using it, you're going to have to use an external recorder with another microphone like something like SJ, um, something like a, uh, what's all right, I use the Zoom H1 Handy recorder to do that as well. But overall, I'd have to say the SJ Cam SJ4000 Wi-Fi offers amazing value for money. And, you know, just ask yourself, what would you rather have? One GoPro White, which go for about £150. You're, you could have two of these babies, so you could do twice the angles, twice the fun, twice the, twice the action. And I think if you're, a, if you're watching this video as a photographer and you're thinking, well, I, fan, I might fancy a little camera to record things outside, maybe while I'm working... Um, on projects to do YouTube videos, you know, as a as a B-roll camera to capture the action. You should just buy one of these and have a play with it. You will learn so much about video. Um, on the other hand, if you, you're after a little action camera to take away on holiday, to go skiing, water sports and stuff like that, well, how cool is this? You know, you spend your £70, you spend your US dollars If it breaks and you smash it up, I mean, what, you know, you haven't spent the fortune <laughs> that you'd spend on a GoPro. So there we go, SJ Cam SJ4000. Highly recommended. If you've got some spare cash and you think think you might be interested, just get one. You'll love it. You'll love the footage and uh, you won't look back. So, there we go. That was like the quick review. Um, but as you know, I'm known for my longer <laughs> my longer video. So, go and grab a cup of coffee, a cup of tea or a, a beer or something. And uh, let's get into a little bit more detail. So you're probably looking at me thinking, well, this guy, he's obviously not an action camera type of fella. If you've looked at my YouTube channel, you know I'm not into uh, you know, going out skiing or uh, doing action stuff at all. You know, so why, oh why, so I'm just uh, getting my laptop to turn back on again. Why, oh why did, um, did he buy an action camera? Well, or want to buy an action camera anyway which comes with a waterproof case, a helmet mount, um, bike mounts, and the ability to take amazing footage from impossible angles, because it's not like something that, that, that I, I'm really into as a hobby. You know, I mean, I used to be into mountain biking 20 years ago on my Canada, but I haven't been on my bike for quite a while, and I need to lose a little bit of weight. But anyway, the answer is obviously that I record quite a few YouTube videos, and a lot of them are a bit like this. They're very static. It's me talking to the camera. Maybe I use a second camera to do close-ups, you know, the, the beginner's guides, that sort of thing. But I've started to kind of venture out a lot more, to get out and about on location. I'm doing like four photo walk videos of uh, places I visit, but also I'm kind of trying to do field trials where while I'm out and about, I record, you know, to camera. And what I've used uh, most of the time is my phone. So I hold my phone up and I kind of go on and I record it, which is okay and the quality is okay, but it's not brilliant. And I... I the format of a phone makes it quite difficult to mount somewhere. So if I want to put the camera, you know, on a tree so I can stand in front of the tree and then do a piece to camera or walk past, you know, doing action shots, that kind of thing. Can't really do that with my phone. I'd need to have someone else or some sort of fancy 
tripod bracket and I've tried a few but they all tend to squeeze the phone and I don't like that I mean it's almost like it's going to break it all you know I'll drop the phone it'll go in the mud and I'll be like Ugh. so I thought right what I need what I need is a GoPro um, and so you know just before Christmas I started to um, look at, at GoPros really looking at and it was kind of the time when they were advertising the change between the threes and the fours and so there was some there were some interesting deals deals actually on GoPros where you could get GoPro 3 Silver for just under £200 and the GoPro 3 White is was and is about £150 in the UK and I was thinking oh, I really kind of fancied it I thought yeah yeah you know I'll make, make loads of use of it um, even though that's an awful lot of money and I would normally not, not spend that much but you know it was for Christmas and that sort of stuff but anyway I was looking on Amazon and they had a, a, one of their lightning deals for Christmas on a camera very similar to the SJ4000 and uh, I remember staying up, I think it started off at 11 o'clock at night or something, and I was going, right, okay. I, I think it, normally it was like £65, I think, and it was, and they don't tell you what it's going to go down to. And when the offer came on, it went down to something like £45 or £50, something like that. And I thought, right, I'll pull the trigger. By the time I went to buy it, though, they'd run out. And I thought, oh, great. But what that made me do was research some of these other non-GoPro action cams that look like GoPros to see what the video quality was like and... The consensus, if you like, on YouTube and lots of review, review sites was the SJ4000 was a useful piece of kit. And the proof is in the pudding. So I looked at lots of YouTube videos that were taken by you know, the average Joes and Janes using the SJ4000. I thought the video, video footage was great. I thought it looked really good. But then I was still tossing up between I could buy the SJ4000 or for a few pounds more. I could get the new GoPro Hero, which is their new like base level model. But the problem was the new GoPro Hero um, doesn't have a screen on the back. It doesn't have any Wi-Fi, so it can't talk to your phone. It doesn't come with any brackets apart from the basic sticky on ones. And it's a little bit more expensive. And I thought, Ugh. and I thought, well, the fact that the SJ4000 Wi-Fi comes with the screen for composition, because I need that, and you can control it by your phone, so that I can, you know, line things up when I'm going to do a video, so my head isn't in the wrong place or anything. Um, and the fact that it came with all the brackets is a bit of a no-brainer, really. So, you know, I pulled the trigger. I paid my my seventy pounds for um, for the for the camera with an extra battery, and it came just before Christmas, and I've been using it ever since. And I have to say, I'm really pleased with it. As I mentioned in the quick review at the beginning. If you want to do pieces to camera like this, you can't just do it with the SJ4000 Wi-Fi because the microphone isn't good enough. And to be honest, you wouldn't want to use it inside without some serious white balance adjustments. Um, but if you're recording outside, the footage is great. But again, you'd have to use like a microphone with a with a um, Zoom H1 Handy Recorder or something like that, where you're recording it all separately and then you and then you sync it up in post. So as you can sort of get. Uh, listen from the video, you know that you know I'm really pleased with that. So, why don't we take a closer look at the SJ4000 to give you an idea of kind of what you what it looks like and and what you're getting for your money? Okay, so let's have a take a closer look at the SJ4000 uh, Wi-Fi. So as you can see it here, it's actually in its little waterproof case. So let's have a look at that first. We've got the kind of familiar kind of GoPro look. Um, and these buttons are kind of specially designed on springs and seals. So even though it's in its waterproof case, when you press the buttons, that presses the buttons underneath. We've got the GoPro compatible mount. So if you undo this bit, if you've used a GoPro, you'll, you'll know about this. So you kind of take that bit off. And take that off. And that, that, that kind of... Uh, fitting there and on these mounts is the same as the GoPro one so although any cases won't fit because physically the camera is different the actual way that it mounts to accessories is exactly the same so you can use any official uh, GoPro stuff. What I have noticed obviously this stuff is built to a budget and so one of the things you might well you might find is that things like the way that these go together they have a tendency to slip when they're out first out of the box but a little bit of sandpaper just to key the surfaces just to rough them up a tiny little bit makes everything uh, grip very well so we've got the the cap the uh the lens on the front of this waterproof case we've got the mounts and then as you can see if i turn the camera on by pressing that button there you'll see the little screen pop to life now although in fact, i think i've just turned it off because it was on before here it comes. Right, there's the screen. Now, you might think, oh, my God, it's the size of a postage stamp. It's tiny, which is true. It is a very small screen indeed, but it does give you enough 
to be able to compose your images. And if the camera's in a situation where you can't see the screen, you can turn the Wi-Fi on and do exactly the same thing using your phone. So that's the outside of the camera. So to get into it, you kind of flick this latch across here, pop that bit up, that flicks over like so, and then we can drop the camera out. So let's just put that to one side. And you can see how tiny the camera is. I mean, it's, isn't it? it's like the size of a box of boxes. So we've got our um, power button on the front, and then we've got our mode button. So basically, between these two buttons, you can um, you control the camera. And then on the side, we've got a couple of up and down buttons, one which doubles on turning on the Wi-Fi on. And basically, that's how you can navigate through all the, uh, the menus and, and change the settings. Nice, really wide-angle lens. Um, and then on this side, we've got our is that a micro SD I think they're micro SD aren't they or mini SD micro SD little slot little 32 gigabyte one I just pop in there and then we've got our um, little HDMI port if you wanted to plug it straight into a television and then on there we've got our little mini or micro USB I never know which one it is but they're on there and on the bottom we've got the little slot for the battery now a little this is my first little tip actually for the SJ cam in order to get the battery out, you have to flick this little lever here. Unfortunately, though, it's really good at kind of being tricky to get out. But there is a flap that you have underneath the battery to help you pull it out. If when you're putting this uh, cover back in, you leave the flap out, when you come to take the battery out, it makes things an awful lot easier because you can use that flap to pull this cover off as well. So as you can see, the SJ Cam SJ4000 is Wi-Fi, is incredibly small, um, beautifully made um, build quality is you know fine no problems with it at all apart from the difficulty of getting that cover off the bottom and um, some people may say well that the the um, buttons can be a little bit stiff on the waterproof cases well you know that is true but all you need to get is a little bit of um, of uh, what is it not lithium is it lithium grease not lithium grease the silicon grease and just dab a tiny little bit on each one of these, not normal grease or WD-40 or anything like that that will attack the seals. Um, and that, but I find them. I mean, yeah, they are stiff, but but it's a waterproof case, isn't it? So there we go. That's a closer look at the SJ4000 Wi-Fi. So as far as video quality goes, you've seen the clips at the beginning of the video, and I'll play some more right at the end as well. Um, and I've done some comparisons, even with my Canon 600D DSLR, the, the, the T3i that I use for, for most of my to camera videos you see on YouTube. And I've got to say, the SJ4000 stands up very, very strongly indeed. Um, the colours are punchy, if a little blue. Um, they're crisp, they're sharp. The advantages of having this super wide angle lens, which captures an amazing view, but also where everything is in focus, means that you don't have the problems of things being out of focus like you do with the DSLR. Um, and it's nice and light. And the 30 frames per second 1080p video is, is, is really good. Again, don't buy one expecting to get 720p um, slow motion at 60 frames a second, which you could then, you know, slow to 30 frames a second so it looked nice and smooth. You know, all it does is, is double up the frames. Um, so it doesn't give you true, true slow mo that way. But, you know, you can slow the 1080p 30 frames a second down to, you know, um, 15 frames a second. I think it looks okay. I'm, I'm no expert, though. Um, and, and, and it looks cool that way. I mentioned the white balance a little bit. And, yeah, basically, it often, oftentimes, the white balance is a little bit blue. So what that means is the videos, if you're doing a video on a cloudy day, the clouds tend to have a little bit of a blue tinge. Everything has a, has a little bit of blue. And on a sunny day, maybe the green, the green grass will be a little bit, won't be quite as green and the sky will be very blue but it's just you know you just move it back a little bit it does really struggle inside though with tungsten lights um on the video quality uh, test video i've done um, a few videos back on the youtube stream you'll see that you can bring it back uh, a li uh, quite a way but there is a limit you know i couldn't make the video from the um uh, SJ Cam 4000 look like this video for example and this video probably might even look a little bit blue because of the way that I'm using uh, Talogen lights here and there's tungsten lights behind me so I have to change the white balance quite a lot um, with the custom white balance in camera and then uh, tweak it a little bit in in uh, Premiere 
the Pro, and I, I never really get it right. It always looks a little bit odd, but I couldn't get it this good using the SJ Cam 4000 under those conditions. If you had white balance, uh, sorry, daylight balance bulbs and lights, it'd probably be fine, um, but I wouldn't buy one as an inside camera, but I would definitely buy one um, as a B-roll camera to, to do shots outside as well. Um, editing the footage as well is easy peasy. It's a proper... Um, file you get not like you get the compressed avi formats you get with some other cameras um you know little little um dv cameras and stuff like that um and very very easy to edit premiere pro loves it windows movie maker loves it as well sound quality again a little bit rubbish um i've done a done a video about this um already on youtube and basically uh, when it's in its waterproof case it can't really hear anything apart from very loud wind noises or things that are tapping directly onto the camera you know if you're talking into it it's not going to hear anything um you have to use the skeleton case that it comes with which is that case there which which obviously isn't the waterproof case and then the internal microphone does pick up stuff but things like your voice even when the camera is quite close is still still pretty quiet so you need to boost it up quite a lot in post but that means you get lots of noise so the best thing to do is if you're going to use it like that is to use a separate recorder like a zoom handy zoom uh, h1 and maybe with a lab mic or just with a built-in mic just like i do for my youtube videos and then sync that up in post processing in windows movie maker or premiere pro what, whatever you use it's very easy to do once you get a bit of practice and in fact programs like premiere pro can do it virtually automatically uh, for you that way but just bear that in mind because if you if you're doing pieces to camera outside like I've done some pieces to camera um, in my car outside and actually proper on the top of like a hill and things like that it does mean you've got to have like the SJ4000 you know on a gorilla pod mounted somewhere and then you've got your lab mic with your zoom h1 so it does make the setup more complicated than just picking up your phone pressing record and talking into it but the quality you get out of it is much much better and it's much much more versatile because you can be moving around um, you know as you would with a proper camera on a tripod the stills quality, mm, okay. I mean, its native resolution is, is I think it's about two megapixels. Um, although you know you can change it to twelve megapixels, but you don't get any more detail by going out that way. So, it, but it takes nice enough photos for the web, um, and and I guess if you wanted to print them out very very small, um, they suffer from the same white balance problems. Um, but they're okay, you know. But you wouldn't, I wouldn't buy this one uh, for for a stills camera. Now, what it's really good at, I think, which is surprising, which was something I thought would be interesting, was um, time lapse. Because you can set it up on a gorilla pod or a tripod or, or, or some sort of mount, and it will take a picture basically every three seconds or five seconds or ten seconds until the battery runs out. So, you know, to make eight seconds of video, you've got to basically set it up for, and run for ten minutes, which eight seconds of a time lapse of one subject is... It's, quite long enough I think and before you go on to something else so you can kind of set it up in front of an interesting subject with the sky move you know with the wind blowing so clouds are moving across sit down there have a cup of tea if you're a smoker have a cigarette give it 10 minutes stop you know and you've got your your time lapse and I found that even uh, in post processing slowing it down so it's not running at 24 frames a second your time lapse but running at something like 12 frames a second looks all right as well it doesn't look too jerky and that is really great fun and it means that say you're out with your DSLR taking photographs in a location or on a shoot, you know, you could just set this up in the corner and it would do a time lapse of either the shoot itself or maybe you're building something or, or breaking something down. Um, yeah, really interesting. Lots of different artistic possibilities. And because it's in its own waterproof case, you could even set it up outside or something like that, just clicking away, say during a, a lightning storm or something, and there's a good chance it might take some pictures. Now, the Wi-Fi control via your phone. Now, I'm not going to demo it here. I'm not going to show you because it's um, it's okay. It works okay. It, <laughs> it, it's good enough. And you've got to treat it. This is going to, I don't, don't want this to sound more complicated than it is, but you've got to treat it like a change of state. In fact, I tell you what, I will get my phone and I'll show you, I'll show you quickly what, basically what you've got to do just to give you an idea of, um, of how it works. Um, so what you do is you turn your camera on your SJ4000 and then you turn your Wi-Fi on on your phone and to turn the, the Wi-Fi on the SJ4000 you press that little side button there and then you go into your settings for your, for your Wi-Fi and you get it to connect to 
this baby, which should appear in just a second. Uh, which it will do. Here we go. So I've now connected my phone to my SJ4000. But let's have it pointing, I don't know, pointing towards me. How about that? See if we can do it without falling over. No, it's going to fall over. Something like that, that would probably do. And then once I've done that, I think you then go into their uh, software, which is called SJ Cam HD. You press connect to your camera, and then hopefully, in just a second, you'll see that's me <laughs> there. And there's a little bit of lag, um, but it's great for composing your videos and your time lapses and stuff like that. Let's move. I put that there. And then, can you see me there? How cool is that? Where it gets a little bit flaky <laughs> is when you want to do things. So you press the you press the button and you get the record button up, say here like that, and you press record and it will the SJ Cam will start recording video. But what will happen is sometimes it will lose contact and you're not sometimes sure what the, this is doing. So if this is remotely somewhere, you're not quite sure what what it's up to. So the best way I found of using it is when you're using the software. Is you, you click on it and you change it from say video to pictures and then back again take it back to video and then you press record and then you know it's going to be in video mode and it's going to start recording and then you then you then you stop it <laughs> and then if you want to start again go go to picture mode then go back to video and then press record again it's almost like you, you're telling you, you're telling it like for a change of state so like you, you, you're imagining this thing's forgetting what the camera's up to because it's losing connection. And as long as you do it like that, because the camera will always carry on doing what this last told it to do. So if it last told it to change it to a video, this would be in video mode. And if it last told it to um, start a video, this thing will carry on uh, recording a video. Um, but it's always worth, if you can, <laughs> worth checking that it is recording or has stopped recording when you get to the end. But the fact that you can, you, you know, you can put this on a Gorillapod in a, up in a tree or something like that. Control, see it's dropped the Wi-Fi connection now. Um, it's picked it up again now. You can set this up in a tree and set the composition on your phone and then even turn the Wi-Fi off and start it recording the normal way is such a boon. So brilliant. Saves so much time and makes your videos, you know, look so much better. Now, the SJ Cam, um, SJ4000 Wi-Fi, can do quite a few other things as well. Um, you could use it as a uh, dashboard camera in a car. You can put car mode on it, and I think what happens then is when you turn it on, if it's connected to a power supply, it automatically starts recording, and continuously. You can, I think they call it cyclic recording, so it'll keep recording, and then it'll start over-recording after a, a period amount of time. But what's very useful as well, and uh, is it has a motion sensor mode as well. And you might have seen in the clip at the beginning, and maybe the clip at the end. I put them in the the kind of the videos of the pigeons in our back garden. And um, to, to basically to take that, you can use the SJ four thousand as a wildlife camera. All you do is set it up on a little tripod, a GoPro, a um, gorilla pod, or, or something like that, or or on sort of some sort of mount. Put it into motion sensor mode. Put it down somewhere, like on a bird table. Or maybe we know where some squirrels are going. Maybe put some food there as well. And whenever anything passes in front of the camera, it will, t it will turn itself on and start recording. And when they've gone, it will stop recording. And it will do this until the battery runs out. Which in cold weather isn't that long. But in warm weather, you know, it can be quite a, quite a well. And it's something I'm really keen to explore. Because you could set this up high up in a tree or something. Near a bird's nest. Um, near, I don't know, a, 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 say fox holes or something. Or a badger set. And when the when the badgers came out or the foxes came out, maybe it wouldn't work at night, but you know, in the evening or something like that, you know, this thing would turn on, take some footage, and then you could go back out. And it's small enough to be able to hide it somewhere, so the animals hopefully wouldn't investigate it and eat it or drag it across, or other people might not come along and do it that way. So um, I think that that's incredibly useful as well. I haven't mentioned it already, but you can shoot and uh, video in HDR mode, which is basically how I shoot the video with this anyway, because I think it gives you the best look you know you get the most detail in the shadows and in and in the highlights okay so what we'll do next is let's just have a really quick look at you know what you get in the box too okay so here we have the box obviously you get your sj cam sj4000 and the waterproof case and there's one of the kind of tripod mounts already on the camera and in fact behind me 
here we have uh, an old monopod that I haven't used in years. But I put one of the other um, tripod kind of mounts onto this and I use it as a go pole, which means that you're in, you might have seen on the video where I dunk it into the water. So this is great for that because it has a head that I can adjust the angle on when the camera's on there, which is quite secure. Ooh, let's check my finger. And then it's extendable. So, you know, I can make it really, really long. It's light, you know, so you can do sort of selfies videos with it, like that. Um, and you can dunk it in the water as well with the camera on. So that's really good as well. So that's another tip. So you get enough accessories to do that. Just put that there. Right, let's have a quick look in the box. You get loads of stuff. Let me just pop that down. Now this accessory, this little baby, is one of the most useful things. This is the the skeleton case, and you can put the SJ4000 in that, and it leaves the microphone exposed. And at the moment, I've got the uh, one of the clips on it, um, like a body clip. So that comes out of there. That goes onto there, and then you could clip that onto your clothing or something with the with the camera in it. Very, very useful indeed. And then you've got kind of the tripod mounts on the top, or the bottom on the top as well. Useful little piece of kit. You get a spare back, a spare door back, I guess the seals on that eventually go. You get some Velcro straps, again, handy for attaching it anywhere. Numerous little mounts. That's a little right angle mount that you get there, so you can change the angle of it when it's on another mount. That's another little right angle mount for sort of flicking it around, very useful. There's a handle mount, handlebar mount or a, or a seat post mount, basically round. We get an offset clip mount. We get, a ch oh yeah, the package I got came with a little charger as well as a spare battery. Another tripod mount, sticky mount, and another sticky mount, but for the uh, frame holder. There's a couple of zip ties, a metal, kind of uh, breakaway cable and some instructions in there as well. So as you can see, the SJ4000, SJ Cam, um, action camera, Wi-Fi version, really does offer fantastic value for money. And as I said at the beginning in the quick review, I think it's a bit of a no-brainer. If you're thinking about buying a GoPro, but you're thinking, oh, they're a little bit too expensive. And to be honest, with something like, you know, the GoPro Blacks, the 4s, what are they, £300, £350, £400? It's an awful lot of money. You could buy an amazing camera lens for your DSLR for that. However, for £70 UK or about hundred US dollars, you can get one of these little babies. You can experiment. And if you really get into action camera videography, by all means, you know, invest the extra money in something like a GoPro. But I think probably for 90% of us, this little camera produces footage that is is really very, very good indeed. And whether you be someone who's a mountain biker or a surfer or a skier or just a plain old photographer like me who likes recording videos for YouTube and you want something as a B-roll camera or even to do the old piece to camera, the SJ Cam SJ4000 is perfect for that. So put your hand in your pocket, grab that wallet out, get onto PayPal, order yourself one, throw it in your camera bag, have a play, and pretty soon, I'm, I'm, I'm fairly sure you'll be uploading loads of stuff to uh, to YouTube yourselves and really enjoying the point of view that these uh, these little action cams give you. Well, that's enough from me. If you want to ask me any questions, you can email me, scalespeed at gmail.com, or you can put any questions in the comments down below. If you've enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. That really helps. If you really enjoyed the video, please subscribe. That means a lot to me as well. And uh, hopefully, I'll see you again soon.